Thank you for joining News 6 for Results 2020 on ClickOrlando.com and the News 6 Facebook page. I'm Lisa Bell. We are halfway through the final presidential debate with just 12 days to go until the Election Day early voting already underway. I'm joined now by News 6 political expert Jim Clark, UCF historian, joining us once again. What a difference a debate makes. It certainly is. Uh, uh, Donald Trump trying to make points, but much uh quieter, much calmer mm -hmm. than we saw just a couple weeks ago. Much better, don't you think? I think yeah. much better. I think uh, the arguments uh, are being heard. Uh, it was difficult last time to really understand any kind of positions, uh, especially uh, Vice President Biden almost didn't get to finish sentences. Uh, and a lot of people think that President Trump's advisors have told, them, uh, told him to let Biden speak thinking that might actually hurt Biden. So we are now talking about foreign adversaries uh, as we watch this debate, and we are hearing President Trump be go on this Hunter Biden attack and uh, trying to tie him to money in Ukraine and China and other things. Is this effective? I don't know. That's going to be interesting. This is from the Trump playbook from four years ago. You'll recall, Lisa, mm -hmm. that four years ago he went after uh, Hillary Clinton for a variety of things, her email server, a uh, number of relationships with the Clinton Foundation, and that morphed into uh, Crooked Hillary and lock her up. I think what he's trying to do is the same thing this year to tag uh, Vice President Biden as crooked uh, and, uh, and, and destroy him as Hillary was four years ago. Do you feel like a lot of voters, after hearing this, though, are kind of left a little confused and not knowing what to believe? Um, we heard Joe Biden say the guy who got in trouble in Ukraine is that guy pointing to the president. And then he, we said the only guy who's making money in China is that guy, the president. And so we are, uh, you know, obviously watching Kristen Welker, the debate moderator tonight. She's not doing a whole lot of fact checking and trying to set the story straight. So I think a lot of voters will hear this stuff and then not know what to believe. Yeah, well, uh, within hours... Uh, there will be fact checking, but as you point out, it's you know people may or may not follow that, mm -hmm. and so they may accept everything that's uh, that's being said by either candidate. So we won't know really uh, until November third. This debate started with a lengthy conversation on the coronavirus. Uh, did anyone win that part of the debate? I thought it was familiar positions. Uh, President uh, Trump uh, saying we're we're winning on this thing. Uh, and uh, Joe Biden saying, no, we're still losing. Uh, the president used it to, to criticize uh, states where there are Democratic governors, New York, North Carolina, and California. Uh, Joe Biden pointed out that the, the spikes are coming in uh, Midwestern states, primarily red states. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's right on that. North Dakota and South Dakota have the highest rates currently. It was interesting because the president specifically mentioned there were spikes in Florida, Texas, and Arizona, three almost must-win states for him. Uh, and and he said, and now those spikes are gone. And so he, I think he was trying to make an appeal to voters in those states. I think so. And pointing, they're all Republican governors. And so it, uh, it makes them look good. It makes him look good. And it uh, says, hey, these are states that reopened and look how well they're doing. He also pointed out, take a look at what's happening in places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and North Carolina, um, trying to say that things weren't going well there and trying to blame Democrats for that. Yes, those are states with Democratic governors, and, uh, or as he says, Democrat governors. And so that's going to be his, uh, his, uh, his plea that uh, we should, uh, you know, Blame the Democrats for what's happening. We are getting a few comments on the News 6 Facebook page, and I encourage you, if you are watching us on ClickOrlando.com or the Facebook page, to send us your comments or questions, and I'll be asking Jim those questions for you. Um, some people are saying Trump is much better when he is not arguing or debating with the moderator. Just let him speak. He is doing great. And that's certainly what his advisors, I think, were telling him to do. Yes, his advisors uh, clearly told him he had lost the first debate, that uh, he should... Uh, uh, let the uh, other candidates speak, and he's generally followed that. He's been uh, interrupting a couple of times, but generally he has listened to his advisors. So, as you know, we are 12 days out from the election day, uh, but people are already voting. Millions of people, a record number of people have already cast their ballots. Do these debates at this point matter? I think so, because this is the last chance these two 
candidates are going to have to get in front of the American people and get a huge audience. And we saw that with these town hall meetings. Um, they each drew about 10, 12 million viewers, while the first debate drew 70 million viewers. So this is the final look uh, before uh, the majority of Americans go to the polls and vote. And historically speaking, they have uh, been persuasive in some elections. You and I were talking about that earlier, going all the way back to Nixon and Kennedy. Yes, uh, Nixon's loss in the first debate undoubtedly cost him the presidency. Um, Gerald Ford in 1976 stumbled on a, a question about uh, communist influence, and he lost a very close race probably because of that. So debates do matter and they can affect the election. From what you've seen so far in this debate, has there been a uh, you know big moment for any, any candidate, a make or break moment for either of the candidates? I don't think so. I think that President Trump is looking much better in this debate, uh, much more presidential, not challenging the moderator, not uh, criticizing the moderator. Uh, he had criticized her even before the debate uh, because of her family's Democratic background. But He's been very measured and, as I say, very presidential. We're getting a lot of uh, people joining us on our Facebook live chat right now. A lot of people, though, uh, just saying, you know, Trump 2020 or Biden 2020 and not really asking a whole lot of questions for you right now. Um, so, you know, what do you make of this as we move forward the next 12 days? We're going to be getting more visits here from uh, former President Obama. President Trump is planning to come here to central Florida in the coming days. How much time do they really have left to really change people's mind after this? Well, it's becoming more about turnout, mm -hmm. getting their base to turn out getting people to go to the polls or, or vote uh, uh, early, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and that's become the key. The election uh, four years ago was very close. President Trump won Florida by 120,000 votes out of millions cast. And so he needs a huge turnout. And Joe Biden needs a huge turnout if they're going to have any chance of carrying Florida. And remember, Lisa, Florida is an early reporting state. We're going to start getting returns uh, from the peninsula of Florida about 7.30, mm -hmm. uh, 7.45. And the danger for both of these candidates is that if one is starting to show a lead, that voters in other western states will say... Do you think that really happens, though? It has. Historically, it happens. Uh, the turnout gets depressed. Uh, people say... You know, hey, my candidate's losing. Uh, it's raining outside. Uh, I'm not going to go to the polls. Well, it'll be fascinating to see, as you know, what will happen on uh, November 3rd. But I know everyone is trying to read into what's already happened. And, of course, we've mentioned there's been record turnout already. Record mail-in ballots have been returned uh, and early voting. Are you trying to read into anything that you're seeing right now in terms of those well, trends? This is, And I'm not sure why this is. Democrats tend to vote early, and Republicans like to vote on Election Day. And that's what we're going to see here uh, is uh, a replay of every election. I'm not sure why Democrats vote early and Republicans vote on Election Day, but I'll give you an example. In uh, Marion County, Ocala, mm -hmm. four years ago, uh, Donald Trump ended up with a staggering 61% of the vote in Marion County. But on Election Day, he got 65 percent of the Republican vote. So basically on Election Day, he added four percentage points to his total. So that's the big push that the Republicans are looking for on Election Day. Uh, one of the line of questioning is, of course, the foreign interference in elections. We have had cases like that here in central Florida, specifically in Brevard County. Some people in our area getting emails that are purportedly from the Proud Boys uh, and then come to find out it's, uh, in fact, from Iran and Russia. Um, do you are you concerned about those tactics and foreign interference meddling in our election this year? Uh, obviously, we all saw it, you know, in 2016. I think the concern is that if there are recounts, if it gets dragged out, that uh, foreign entities may be able to hack into computers, may be able to, to change results, things like that. 
And that's the, the real concern. Of course, President Trump accusing uh, the Biden family of taking foreign money and then uh, Joe Biden accusing the president of doing the same thing. And then that's where we got into the whole tax return issue. Uh, president Trump saying that, of course, his taxes are under audit and he will release them once his uh, accountants say he can. What do you think voters make of that line? I think the people who are concerned about his taxes have already made up their minds. I'm not sure uh, that argument's going to change uh, a single mind. The Ukraine incident with, uh, with his son, with Vice President Biden's son, uh, has been lingering for about a year and a half now. It doesn't seem to be affecting uh, the election, but President Trump now has seized upon some emails which were released by uh, his, his, uh, his attorney, Rudy mm -hmm. Giuliani, the former New York mayor, to try to make this a centerpiece issue going into the final days. But no major media outlet has been able to even verify if those emails are even authentic. Right. Rudy Giuliani gave them to the New York Post, a conservative Trump supporter, and the New York Post has refused to make the emails public so that people could look at them and see what they really say. So what are you looking for for the next half of this debate? Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see if they can continue this kind of uh, uh, non-loud, uh, mm -hmm. if you will, tone, I think. It seems to be serving certainly the president uh, well by toning it down a little bit and trying to not interrupt, although I am looking at some of these comments online and it looks like they might be going at it a little bit more like they did in the first debate. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to be here for the second debate because it didn't happen. Right. What do you make of that? Do you think that the lack of that town hall style debate really is going to influence this election much? Well, I, th I think it hurt President Trump simply because he had a bad performance in the first debate and he needed the second debate mm -hmm. to kind of steady the ship. And usually candidates use that to kind of show their warmth and their empathy to average ordinary Americans and to yeah. relate to Americans. Yes. And you'll remember going back four years in the Iowa primary, he skipped the debate there. He got angry and skipped the debate and he lost the Iowa primary. So um, generally speaking, uh, candidates who, uh, who shun debates do badly. Voters frown upon that. Voters frown upon that, exactly. Are we, you know, we're almost through the end of October. Any more October surprises, do you think? I think the October surprise has been there haven't been any October surprises. Uh, there have been a number of smaller uh, yeah. issues. The president uh, coming down with the coronavirus, things like that. But they have seemed to quickly come and go. Okay, I know uh, yesterday when we heard that there was going to be an announcement from the FBI, uh, and it turned out to be regarding these emails that are originating in Iran and Russia, it brought a lot of people back to 11 days before the 2016 election when James Comey said that they were going to be reopening um, the inquiry into Hillary Clinton's emails. Were you, did that cross your mind at all? It did. Mm -hmm. It did because President Trump has been pushing the FBI and Attorney General Barr to announce an investigation of Joe Biden and his son. I think the president was hoping that they would announce some investigation, a repeat, as you point out, of 2016. All right. Well, we're going to continue to watch the rest of this debate. We thank you for joining us. Please continue to send us your comments. And I know you're going to be joining us once again on election night. So we look forward to that. For a complete voter guide and key races ahead of the election, head to clickorlando.com slash results 2020. Also, stay with News 6 at 11 tonight for a full recap of tonight's debate and who Jim Clark thinks won tonight's debate. Have a great <laughs> night.